this article, we outline the pathophysiology and clinical effects of small airways disease and COPD, as well as methods of assessing changes in the small airways. We also take a detailed look at current and emerging treatment options to target the small airways. My name is Professor Rajiv Dahan, and I'm a professor of pulmonary medicine at the University of Tennessee Graduate School of Medicine. Today, I will be discussing our review article entitled, Why We Should Target Small Airways Disease in Our Management of Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, which was published online in June and will appear in the September issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. For this review, we search for studies on Medline focused on COPD and either small airways disease or small airways dysfunction and synthesized our findings. We also cross-checked the citations in the studies we identified, including relevant studies in patients with asthma. So, what do we know about small airways disease? Well, it's defined as a disease that affects airways under two millimeters in diameter. And for over 50 years, it's been identified as a major cause of airway obstruction, particularly early in the course of COPD. In COPD, the prevalence of small airways disease is high, estimated to be between 74% and 83%, and this increases as the disease becomes more severe. In terms of pathophysiology, small airways disease is characterized by airway remodeling, mucus plugging, and immune cell infiltration. And importantly, it contributes to airflow limitation in both of the major COPD phenotypes, emphysema and chronic bronchitis. If left unchecked, small airways disease can have important clinical consequences. Small airways disease is not only associated with poor spirometry results, it also increases lung hyperinflation and leads to poor overall health status. Together, these make the small airways an important treatment target in COPD. However, small airways disease can be difficult to assess accurately because of the small size and inaccessibility of the airways. Many methods are complex or invasive, and overall, there is no unanimously accepted approach. However, some assessment techniques are available, which clinicians should be aware of. Inert gas washout, for example, involves analyzing the nitrogen concentration of the breath during expiration, which provides information on the closing volume of the lung. An increased closing volume is seen in patients with obstructive lung disease compared with healthy individuals. Lung imaging, which includes scintigraphy, single photon emission CT, positron emission tomography, and also functional respiratory imaging are other techniques that can help to assess the small airways. Treating the peripheral airways is challenging, but recent advances in inhaled drug delivery have improved delivery of aerosolized medicine to the small airways. These include optimized formulations of existing drugs, for example, aerosols with high fine particle fractions required for small airway delivery, particle density or charge, and novel inhaler devices and delivery systems. In addition, other non-inhaled treatment strat strategies are being developed. These advances have the potential to deliver more targeted benefits to the small airways, but further studies are needed to evaluate their effect in clinical practice. We invite you to read this article, which we hope will contribute to your knowledge 
of small airways disease and COPD and enhance your ability to take care of these patients. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.